this morning. There's power and strength in his name this morning. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower this morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning, God. Our soul says yes this morning. Our will says yes this morning. In the name of Jesus this morning. Father, we thank you this morning. We look to the hills from which coming is our help, God. All of our help come from you, Lord. Father, we thank you. You said in your word, God, all last week, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prosper. Father, we thank you for the prosperity of our soul, God. We thank you for the prosperity of our finances, God. We thank you for the prosperity of our health, God. In the name of Jesus this morning, Father, we thank you right now. We rage war back against the devil this morning. We don't stand still and just take the abuse of the devil, Father. We fight back, God, with the word of faith, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we plead the blood against the devil. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of our lives this morning. We plead the blood of our loved ones this morning. We plead the blood of our families this morning. We plead the blood of our church this morning. Over the saints of God this morning. In the name of Jesus this morning. Father, we thank you this morning. We look unto you this morning. Father, for you the author and the finisher of our faith this morning. Father, you from everlasting to everlasting, Lord. Father, you the great I am this morning. You are lily in the valley, Father. You are bright in the morning star this morning. So, Father, we thank you for touching and shining in our life this morning. Help us this morning, Lord. Help us this morning as we call upon your name this morning. Help us this morning, Lord. Help us this morning, Lord. We break the band of discouragement this morning. We break the band of discouragement this morning. Father, we break the band of backbiting and sickness and, and, and all type of demonic activities this morning. Father, we take authority over it this morning. In the name of Jesus this morning. Oh Lord, we thank you this morning. Help us this morning. In the name of Jesus this morning. In the name of Jesus this morning. We thank you for power this morning. Empower us this morning, God. Empower us this morning, God. Over every situation, God. Over every circumstance, God. Empower this nation, God. To go in the right direction, God. Empower this community, God. We come against the violence, God. In these communities and surrounding cities, God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for saving the unsaved, reclaiming the backslider. In the name of Jesus this morning, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. You said above all that we may as prosper and be in good health. So, Father, we thank you for good health and good strength, long life upon this earth, Father. We thank you for being saved and sanctified. We thank you for being set apart, God, from the ways and the things of the world. And, Father, we ask it in Jesus' name this morning that you will protect each and every one of us, protect this service, God, protect the songs that will be sung unto you, God, the worship that will be given unto you this morning. Father, we lift you up this morning. We magnify you this morning. We give you the fruit of our lips this morning. Come on, let's stand on our feet and get ready to give God some praise this morning. Amen, amen. In name, God, glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory.
joy giver hallelujah yes and when he give you joy you can bet that it's going to be great because he give you joy that the world can't give you and the world can't take it away although they may try they will not be successful when we are steadfast and unmovable always abounding in the things of god come on and write He who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except that He comes through me. So then I mercy.
of his name. He is right there on the scene. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Glory, glory. Bless your name, oh God. Bless your name. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Bless you, bless you. We trust in you, almighty God. Where else can we go? Where, where else can we turn? Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. You did not create me to worry. You did not create me to fear. But you created me to worship day. Lord, you created me to worship daily, so I'm going to live it all right. Come on, everybody, can you help us say that? You did not create me to worry. You did not create
stop working you never oh glory 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 never, glory never 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 stop always there god always my god Hiya. oh glory glory we glory. worship you father everything we need everything 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 you need everything you need everything you need ma, 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 yes, ma, 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 oh Ooh. we glorify your name god yes you're so wonderful he's here right now Oh, glory to your name. Mm. Everything. He's Everything right you now. need is He's here. here right now. My Hallelujah. God, my God, my God, my God. Yes, my God, my thank God. you, God. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Yes. Jesus is here. Everything. Everything you need. Everything, right everything, here. everything, everything. Right now, right at the door of your lips. My God, my God. Oh, glory to your name, God. God. We honor you, Jesus. Yes. We reverence you. Thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you, God. Everything. For your visitation, oh God. Everything that we need. We thank you, Lord, that everything we need is here. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Holy ever. Can you just say that Jesus is here? Everything we need is here. Everything we need is here. Everything we need is here. Here right now. It's here right now. Just lift your hands in his presence. Jesus is here. If you need healings, he's here right now. Everything. If you need strength this morning, you can receive it right now. Come on. Jesus is to strengthen me. Everything I need. Come on. Glory, glory, glory. Tell him. He's here to heal you. You need healing. Father, we thank you for your healing power right now. Thank you for your love right now. Thank you for your grace right now. Thank you for your power right now. We love you with all of our hearts this morning. We stand with you for our brother, our sister. Whatever they need right now, God, we pray and believe that it's released right now. Oh, everything, God. Healing is released. You are the Wisdom is released. Power is released. Deliverance is released. Grace is released. Yes, God. We're in agreement now, Father, one with another. For your power to be released in this place. Thank you, 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 thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We love you. I just tell somebody next to you, I'm in agreement with you. What you need today yes. from God will be released in your life. Yes, God. That it will be released in your life today. Come on. Tell him. I believe it yes, now. God. I believe it now. Come on, tell somebody. I believe it now. 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 Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Well, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Thank God for all of you this morning, you who are watching by way of 
YouTube, Facebook, or however you're watching this morning. We're in agreement that God's power is released in your life today like never before. And that whatever you need from the Lord is available to you today. I want you to tell somebody again, God is here for you. God is here for you. You know that song say, when I don't see it, he's still working. When I don't feel it, he's still working. Hallelujah. How many can receive that this morning? He's here this morning to bless you, to strengthen you, to encourage you today. Amen. Well, God bless you. Our brother is coming. Give God glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is here for you. Come on, let's say it again. God is here for me. Amen. Make it personal when you're talking to your father. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. At this time, we're going to prepare to continue worshiping God with our giving. Uh, you know, the Bible says to bring all your tithes into the storehouse to prove me here now, says the Lord of hosts, that if I would not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out of a blessing that you would not have enough room to receive. That is the word of the Lord. That is not a cliche. Amen. Amen. So we need to start honoring God and taking God at his word. Amen. The scripture says to give and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God has a way of getting what, uh, what you sow into back to you in greater measures. Somebody say amen. Amen. So that is how, uh, you know, the, the world have you going from paycheck to paycheck and teach you how to add it up. God shows you how to multiply. Somebody say amen. He said go and multiply and subdue the earth. Amen. So God wants multiplication and multiply blessings to return into your life. You know, amen. So when we understand God's mathematic of being blessed, God's system of being blessed and being prosperous and having something in life, we must follow God's protocol and not man. Somebody say amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to prepare to give unto the Lord as he has blessed us, uh, given us strength, given us power to get wealth. So let us prepare ourselves. Those of you that may be viewing us by way of social media, we ask that uh, you will sow into this work, sow into the kingdom of God, and be a part of what God is doing. You know, the Bible says give and it shall be given back unto you. But if you don't give, then, hey, you don't put nothing in a well, you don't get nothing out. Come on and say amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm, I'm not that old, but I know about a well. It has to be primed up. And amen, and we don't have to stand here and try to prime you up with giving because that is a part of your uh, our, our relationship with, with the Lord. Amen. He, he tells us to give. He gave. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his very be best gift, his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. I, don't, I want everlasting life, but I want to be blessed while I'm in this life. Somebody say amen. Amen. So at this time, if you need an, an envelope, one of the ushers will serve you. And if you can lift your hand, they, they will serve you at this time. And let us prepare to give unto the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We want to give unto the Lord. Amen. Because we know that we could not have went out and worked on our jobs or, or secured business for our business if it had not been for the Lord. Amen. Amen. So glory to God. And we don't want to be grudgely either. Because the scripture says that God loves a what? A cheerful giver. Amen. We got, we got to learn to make giving worth, worthwhile. Amen. We got to learn to make the things of God shine greater than the things of the world. Amen. Amen. And when it comes to giving, we can't get uh, shown out on it or, and, 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 and turn our back on it or turn our nose up to it. That is something that we must do as it relates to who we are. We have to learn how to do the things that are pleasing to God rather than what's pleasing to man. You know, and we wonder why life gets hard along the way. Because we pull out some of the precepts and concepts of God and we put it with man. Oh, well, you don't have to give to this. God didn't say give. You know, you can still be blessed in God. Yeah, of course you will. He's a faithful God. He's a just God. But great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when you show forth that God is in you, you're going to do godly things. Amen. And you're going to associate yourself with godly things. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So at this time, if we're ready, we're going to stand together. And amen, if you're not, we'll give you a few more moments. We don't want to rush you. We want you to make a, a conscious decision because it's a heart condition. It ain't got nothing to do with your, your, your money in general. It has to do with your heart. A, a man can have a million dollars and still give one dollar. 
because his heart is pointed towards the rest of that, 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 that you know, that, that, mo that money he has. Amen? So now when you have a, a, a change of heart, then it, the money doesn't matter because you have a source. And if it's Jesus and God is your source, then you're not looking at the, at the money because you know he's able to replenish it and multiply it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I think we all have it right now. Amen. And those of you that may be viewing us, I believe you received it too. So let us give unto the Lord as he has blessed us. You, there's multiple ways on the stream to give. And uh, we ask that you be a blessing unto the work of God and to the kingdom and to the ministry. And uh, that God will continue to bless you and open up doors for you as well. Amen. Amen. If nothing else, let us stand together so that we can uh, believe God for our givings and believe God upon our homes and our families, that God may multiply every seed that is being sown here today, that God will send increase into our lives. Glory to God like never before. You know, the Bible said you have not because you ask not. And so if we use our faith and work our faith, then we can open up greater doors. Amen. And we can cause an inward flow to come in into our finances, into our health, into our wealth and strength. You know, but we must understand that we have to apply the word of God. We have to trust the word of God. So, so let us start trusting the word of God because in this season that we're in, the enemy coming harder than ever to steal, kill, and destroy. We see it every day. We see poverty coming back around. And we can say, say the economy is doing it, but also we're not activating our faith, so we're playing a part. Somebody say amen. So we need to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So at this time, lift your givings up towards heaven as an act of faith. Glory to God, because we want to show forth our faith. Uh, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for every offering, every tithe, God, every giving, uh, every love offering, God, in the name of Jesus, every act of faith and kindness that they're sowing now, God, those that are in the sanctuary, God, has their heart and their mind set on you, God, according to your word, God. You said to give, and it shall be given back unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So, Father, we believe your word to be true, and you said let God be truth in every man alive. So, God, we call you uh, at your word to this morning, Father, that you will bless us, God, according to your word. So, Father, we thank you right now that you will bless and sanctify each and every one of these seeds that are sown. And, Father, that you will give them more, that you will give them increase in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you for more grace, more mercy, health, and strength, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you that no weapon formed against our finances shall prosper. We thank you for ever increasing us now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. If you believe that, come on and give God a hand of praise. Come on and give him a hand of praise, and at this time you may come and, and place your givings on the altar. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on, let us give unto the Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Let us worship the Lord. Amen. That's what we're doing. We're worshiping the Lord. Amen. We're worshiping the Lord without giving. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but it's always a pleasure to worship the Lord, to give unto the kingdom of God. The Bible says that when we give, glory to God. Amen. We lend unto God. So we want to be able to show God that we love him. Glory to God. Show God that we enter what he has for us, his plan of prospering. Glory to God. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prosper. Glory to God. God is ready to take you to another level. Glory to God. He's ready to take your faith to another level. He's ready to take your walk to another level. Let us continue to trust the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. Yes. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Every prayer. My giving is a praise. My giving is a worship unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Is anybody here understanding that? Let's stand just for a minute. Because God love a cheerful giver. Say, Lord, I thank you. I was able to worship you with my giving today. Glory to God. You know, some people want to and can't. I wanted to and I could. <laughs> That's something to praise him about right now. Glory to God. You know, I hear people receiving the offering. They say, if you don't have to give, you know, but thank God you have to give. Glory to God. I don't know if you know how blessed you are. You got a desire to give. Glory to God. Father, we thank you today for blessing your people that they can worship you with their substance as well as their lips. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, you may be seated. Tell somebody, I had it to give this morning. I had it.
to give this morning. Glory to God. You know, I don't know. Some people may think that's uh, not something to worship God about, but I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you wanted to give and you didn't have it. I've been there. I had the urge to give, but I didn't have it. I've been in a position where I had the urge to give. I had it, but I also had another voice saying, don't do it. Uh, nobody don't want to talk to me on that one. But you got to learn how to break through into all God has for you. Amen. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you today. I thank God for each of you. I believe God has a word for you this morning, an anointing for you this morning, strength for you this morning that will help you along the way. You know, we are in a journey. We are on a journey. How many of you know we are on a journey? We're just passing through this earth. Our home is in heaven. We've already been registered in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the Bible says that we are sojourning through this earth. And, you know, it's the will of God for us to make it through this earth successfully in a profitable manner, in a healthy manner, in a peaceful manner, in a victorious manner. But you know, the scriptures say that we have to learn the ways of God. You know, that's what made Moses so um, powerful with God. He knew God's ways. How many of you know it's important for us to know God's ways? You know, people say, well, I know the man but you don't know his ways. You don't know his word. You don't know his likes and his dislike, but you want to say, I know the man. I'm going to give you something the next time somebody say that to you, ask them, do you know his word? Do you know his word? Because knowing the man means you know the word. Because without the word, you cannot know God. The word is the revelation of God. The word is Jesus, who is the very image of God. The word gives us God's principles, precepts, likes, dislikes, the way that God has designed for us to walk through the earth so that we may walk into heaven or into his presence spiritually or naturally when he comes to get us, either death or the rapture, we are ready to stand in his presence at that very moment. You know, we got to live every day like today is the last day. We can't play around. How many of you know playing time is over? We're, we're in the last of the last days. And God began to speak something to me that I'm going to probably be doing a series on for the next couple of weeks. Um, how many of you know everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die? Y'all heard that before? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Let me give you something else you can add to that. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but 98% of the believers don't want to walk in the spirit. Oh, let me say that one more time. Everybody want to go to heaven, but 98% of the believers don't want to walk in the spirit. Now, the Bible says if you don't walk in the Spirit, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's plain in the Scriptures. God expects us. No, he don't expect us. He demands from us a transformed life. We can't just connect with God and then think it's all going to be okay. That's just like reporting to school in kindergarten and never go back. You cannot expect a diploma. You cannot expect a Ph.D., if you don't start at the beginning and walk this thing out. Tell somebody, walk it out. Now, I want you to write something down. I want you to write something down. Those that's taking note, I want you to write something down. I want you to remember this because the enemy wants us to forget this. He that endure it. I heard somebody want to finish it for me. How many of y'all can finish that? Let me see the hands that can finish it. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Write that down now. Not he that endureth for five years. He that endureth for ten years. He
he that endured for just a little while, he that wants credit for enduring now, he said, he that endured to the end. See, enduring to the end is going to take consistent walking with God through all kinds of spiritual and natural terrain. You're going to have ups and downs, downs and ups, ins and outs. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. That means many terrains the righteous got to navigate. But the scriptures say God deliver him or her out of them all. But you got to keep moving. You got to keep walking. You got to keep pushing. You got you to have your eyes set on the prize of finishing. Some people can't see past tomorrow. Some people can't see past this moment right here. I, I'm, by, I'm just hanging on by a thread. No, you're not hanging on by a thread. You are already, your name's already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your job is to endure to the end. And how do we endure to the end? We grow in knowledge. We grow in grace. Tell somebody, grow in knowledge. Grow in grace. This is how we endure to the end. Because I hear you, Holy Ghost, what you knew last week may not be able to keep you this week. You may run into a different type of devil. You may run into a different type of affliction. You may run into a different type of circumstance where religion won't help you. Some of these things that's going on now in these last days, these devils that's being released that are coming against uh, 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 people's relationships and finances and bodies and minds, these devils don't care about whether or not you make it to the end. They want to stop you in your tracks. They want you to backslide, throw in the towel, give up. But how many of you know he's given us standing power? Glory to God. He say, when you stand, stand therefore. Have you done all to stand? See, have you done all to stand? Stand therefore. Glory to God. It's standing time. It's growing time. It's, it's pursuing time. It's hunger time for the things of God. But see, only those that have been experiencing some things will be able to make it through these days that we're in. The scriptures say if God doesn't shorten the time, even the elect could be deceived or pulled away. Why? Because the things that are coming up on the face of the earth. The scriptures say don't be troubled by the things that are coming up on the face of the earth. He said, now he didn't say don't be ignorant of them, but don't be troubled by them because God is greater than any power that can be released upon the earth. Any satanic operation is under the subjection of the name of Jesus. Glory to God. But, the, but this, 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 um, this uh, statistic bothered me when I heard the man of God say that. I'm like, what? He says 98% from research, 98% of believers don't walk in the spirit. They are flesh walkers who believe in Jesus Christ. Oh my God, that hurt my heart. They believe in Jesus Christ, but they spend 98% of their time walking in the flesh. And the scriptures specifically say, they that walk in the flesh cannot please God. They that walk in the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I want to talk to you a few minutes now. All I can do is get this started. I want you to go with me to John chapter 3, verse 5. John chapter 3, verse 5. You can jot that down for time's sake. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He didn't say you must join XYG Church. He said you must be born again. Before you can even start this journey, you've got to be born again. So we can't even walk in the Spirit. We can't even do anything in the Spirit until we are born again. We have to have our spirit touched by God that we may be able to connect with God. See, religion will connect your mind with God. Religion will connect your mind with God, but being born again will connect your spirit with God. I don't know if anybody can hear me up in here. That's why you got to be careful about religion. Because religion will have your mind connected to do's and don'ts and rules and regulations and putting on a show. But when your spirit is born again, you know that you know that you know that you know that you know I've been born again. Now, if you don't know that, 
We need to get that work done. Because you can act right and still be wrong. Ah, yeah, Bosha. You, you don't want to act the part. You want to be the part. Glory to God. You want to know that you've been born again. You want to know that your spirit's been touched. You may not be doing everything right, but you know that you know that you know on the inside, glory to God, I've been touched by God. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I want to be. But, but, but I know I still, I'm growing. I'm going after God. I'm, I'm thirsty for God. I'm not religious. I'm not traditional. I'm not trying to put on a front. I have been touched by God. So you got to know this. You can't be wondering about this. You got to know this because you don't get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life by coming to church or joining the church. You get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life when you join Christ. When you become one with him, when your spirit is awakened by the touch of God and your spirit and God's spirit become one. And now you're able to hear his voice. You're able to sense his leadings. You're, you're, you're accountable now to the spirit of God. My God, that's a bad word in today's society, being accountable. See, but nobody wants to be accountable. Again, everybody wants to go to heaven. Everybody wants their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Everybody wants God to do all he said he could do. But nobody, 89% of people don't want to be accountable, not even to God. Do you know we can grieve the Holy Ghost? We can shut down the voice of God? Why and how? By yielding to the flesh. Now, how many of you know you've been born again? Let me see the hands. You know that you've been born again. Uh, do I see the hands here? Uh, let me raise them hands up. I know that I've been born again. All right, all right, all right. See, you got to be sure of that. Now, if you're not sure of that, you have to ask God, God, I don't want to be religious. I don't want to be an actor. I want to be a participator in the life of Christ. I need that supernatural experience of being born again. I love you. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you paid the price for me. I need that born again experience that you told Nicodemus about. Come into my heart. Touch me. Start a work in me. Change me. Transform me. I have to have this in order to be able to see the kingdom of God. So this is number one. I must be born of the Spirit. I got to know this. I hear you, Lord. I hear you. How can I know if I've been born of the Spirit? You can be convicted. Oh, yeah, Bo Shabbat. You can be convicted about your actions. See, see, people who are not born of the Spirit, they have a conscience, but their conscience is dead to God. They can be, they can be, more, uh, I can say this, they can be sorry about some things that they're doing, or things they're doing they're not wanting to do. But being convicted about it to the point that where God, I, 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 this is hurting you, this is hurting me, this is hurting my loved one. God, change me, touch me. I've got to be changed. I know this is not what you planned for my life. And you're convicted about this thing. And, you, and this conviction drives you to God for change. I, I don't know if anybody, anybody ever been drove, driven to, to, to God for change? Anybody ever experienced that? Being driven to, you've got a revelation that this is not what God pleased. This is not what God wanted in your life. This particular attitude, this particular activity, this particular appetite is not what God wants. And I'm driven in prayer by the Holy Ghost, just like Jesus was driven into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I'm driven to God. To get this thing out of my life. I, I need to see some hands. I need to see some people working with me up in here. This is the hospital, glory to God. This, this ain't where you just come in and see everybody else in the hospital. We all up in here together seeing the great physician. Glory to God. They even ask you at the doctor's office, have you ever had this before? Have you ever been treated for this before? Anybody in your family ever been treated for this before? So God want to know, have I been able to treat you? Oh, yeah, Boshi Kabaha. Have I been able to treat you before with some issues? See, people who, 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 who God ain't been able to treat, haven't been able to see in his office, I'm kind of worried about them might be in that 98%. 
Are you ready? Number two, once I, once, I, once, I, once I know I've been born again, once I know I've received the Spirit, number two, I, 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 I got to receive the Holy Spirit. I got to receive his actions on me. I got to receive his actions in my heart. I got to receive his actions in my mind. I got to receive his actions in my appetite. I got to receive his leading and his guidance in, 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 my, in the things that I allow in my life. Because he is the author of transformation. He will take the word and confirm it in my life. But I have to come into agreement with him. All right, I'm born again, number one. Number two, Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. Acts 2 and 38. Let me know when you got it. My God. Woo, Jesus, thank you. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see the hands again that's been born again. Oh, that's looking good. That's looking good. That's looking good. That's looking good. So now I'm born again. This is where all of the walking with God begins. Not, I joined church before I was born again. Anybody join church before they was born again? I'm the only one. I, I wasn't bit more born again when I joined church. I went down to shuck the preacher's hand, got on the church roll. They took me to the water, baptized me. I went in a dry devil and come up a wet devil. I wasn't born again. And if I would have stayed like that, I would have went to hell. If something had to happen to me, I would have went to hell. Because nobody told me about being born again. I was told about baptism and and you save through baptism, and you save once you get a preacher's handshake, you in the church, you, yes, you got it. But the Bible say that's not it. Nobody told me about enduring to the end. I just tried to make Sunday look good. Oh, y'all don't want to work with me. Is anybody working with me? I just tried to make Sunday look good. I went to church Sunday, and Sunday evening I was at the liquor store. In the clothes, I wore to church. I, I don't need no I'm about What a bit more thinking about changing. But when I got born again, I had a desire to change. Something on the inside. Y'all you know, know what I'm talking about, don't you, Pastor Virginia? Something on the inside. Start working to change my outside. My appetites change. The places I used to go change. Songs I used to sing change. Things I used to drink and eat, smoke changed glory to god places i used to go changed and when i was going through that change i would get convicted if i was in the wrong place with the wrong people doing the wrong thing sometimes i'd be terrified in that club i just can't stay up in here i can't stay i'm scared somebody gonna shoot me what if i die i ain't got no business up in here y'all y'all don't hear me up in here something on the inside of me kept telling me, you this ain't where you're supposed to be this is not the life i call you to you change now. You're going to lose some friends, but I'm going to give you the power to stand up under it. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Some folks going to tease you, but I'm going to give you the power to stand. Some folks going to not want to have nothing to do with you, but I'm going to give you some new friends. Ah, yeah, yeah. I had to walk this thing out. I started my process of enduring to the end. That's been many, many years ago. Many, many, many years ago, had all kind of opportunities to backslide. Has anybody had opportunity to backslide? Let me see the hands that have had opportunity. Ooh, look at that. That's 100%. Had opportunity to backslide. What do you say, Pastor Virginia? Every day. Every day. That's why I say endure to the end. Man, just enduring to the end of the day is a warfare. Y'all better hear me up in here. It just enduring to tomorrow. Just day by day. It's almost like an addict. That is getting off drugs. You ever talk to an addict that's getting off of drugs, alcohol, or whatever? He said, day by day. Lord, give me the strength to make this day. Lord, give me the strength not to drink or smoke or sniff or whatever this day. That's why the Bible said we have to live this day like it's the last day. Glory to God. Help me to endure this day. Glory to God. This day. And then now, now I, I got that working in my spirit. How many of y'all got that working in your spirit? I know, I know that I want, I know that I want to walk with God. Yeah, yeah. Now I may not be walking with Him like I wanna, but I know I want to. 
I already know that. I already know that. I already know that. So now I got to receive what God has given me. I could come out and give you a dollar, ten dollars, twenty dollar, hundred dollar bill. Won't do you any good if I can't get it in your hand. I, you got to take it. Tell somebody you got to take what God has given you. You got to receive what God has given you. You got to work with what God has given you. He want to keep you from getting it. But once you get it, he want to stop you from working with it. Glory to God. Turning you to the left. Turning you to the right. Turning you around. He want to keep you from working with what he has given you. Oh, glory to God. Here, 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 here what the word says. Second, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, they want to know, what, what, would, what must we do? To be saved. What must I do to make it to the end? What must I do to enter into this thing and to keep strong through this thing until I come to meet him? He says this. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, people can say what they want to say about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't listen to those fools. Don't you listen to them. You cannot make it to the end without the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The days ahead, I'm telling you, religion is being turned upside down. You know preachers doing all kinds of stuff, talking about in the name of the Lord. Living all kinds of ways. You got whole churches full of abominations. Saying that God accepts me the way I am. Yeah, he accepts you the way you are, but he say change. He's the only one that will not change. He says, I'm God and I change not. If anybody's going to be doing some changes around here, it's going to be you. When you come to me, I'm going to change you. If you let me. Now, if you don't let me, you, you just have to you know, suffer the consequences. Refusing to be changed is rebellion. Oh, my God. Somebody write that down. Please write that down. That's fresh. Refusing to be changed is rebellion. Because if you've been truly born again, the Holy Spirit is bringing you to repentance daily. He quickening you daily. How many of y'all heard the Holy Ghost speak to you daily about that's not right? That's not right. Uh-uh. Don't think like that. Don't act like that. Now, some of us won't say that to the other person or whoever else he's talking to us about, but we had not got that mature yet. But we, we move. See, so you're going to move from God dealing with you to repenting before God, and when he start really getting you cleaned up, he's going to have you to repent before the person you did it to. I can put the mic down. We can go home now. We, 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 some of us can't get past that. Oh, no. I'm not going to tell them I'm sorry. I think not. Now, but God already told you it's your fault. You was wrong. Well, 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 they shouldn't have did what they did. No, 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 that's not what God told you. God told you you wrong. The way you responded to what they did wrong is wrong. Wait, is anybody? Are y'all here with me? We're talking about enduring to the end. See, see, when you endure to the end, you, you letting God work on you. The first thing he want to stab and kill is pride. See, pride is what to have you not wanting to repent and tell somebody you're sorry. So, well, I don't have any pride. When the last time you told somebody you were sorry? You know you stepped on some people's toes. You know if you said some things you shouldn't have said, handled some situations the way you shouldn't have made some people feel like they, you shouldn't have, wasn't your, your, your words wasn't seasoned with grace. You, you was full of poison in your tongue. Holy Ghost, check you. You ignored him. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I got this. <laughs> Repent, stay full of the Holy Ghost, receive and operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. His fruits, his gifts should be operating inside of you and I daily. Our children, our wives, our husbands should see the Holy Ghost operating in you not not at church because you give a word or preach a sermon sing a song they should see it in your everyday life 
See, when somebody, when a person say, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Like, I, I probably should have said it, but I could have said it better, a better way. You, 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 God's at work in that person. Because the earth we live in now, people are covenant breakers, truth breakers, liars, deceivers, haters of things that are good. They don't want to do right. So when you see somebody standing up to the plate admitting, I missed it. And, 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 and God is dealing with them. You, you, you need to understand, you, you're dealing with somebody God is working on. You ought to be thankful to God if that's your wife, that's your husband, that's your child, that's your mama, that's your daddy. Because God is at work in that person's life. Sometimes you might find yourself by yourself. You're the only one. That person may not return the love, the forgiveness, the repentance. But how many of you know the Bible says now that ball is in their court and God will begin to work with their conscience after you've released them, glory to God, after you've gotten straight with yourself, with them and God. You know, some people it's going to take God to wrestle with. But just like Jacob, his brother had to let him go so he could wrestle with that angel. He didn't know his brother had let him go until he got to his brother, but he had already let him go, forgave him. Let him go. He was still worried about when he met him, he was going to still be mad at him. And the, the, the man had forgot it, forgave him. See, when you let somebody go, boy, I, this is a word, this is a word. When you let them go, then you can give them to God. Then God got them. God's going to deal with them. But as long as you're trying to hold them with hate, envy, strife, jealousy, the works of the flesh, you know who getting hell? You. Come on, Pastor Virginia. You are. You get in cage because now you don't want to release, you don't want to forgive, and now God cannot forgive and release you. So I think we forget about that. Well, I got a right to hold a grudge. I got a right to be like I am. Look what they did to me. No, 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 no. God say forgive so I can forgive you. Because how many of you know we can't walk this earth without missing it? And we need to, when we confess our sins, for our sins to be forgiven. But if we hold in somebody else, and don't get me wrong, people do ugly things, wicked things. It's not about feeling it. It's about the principle of God. Are y'all with me? This thing is not about feeling. Well, I wouldn't have a religion I can't feel sometimes. How many of y'all know sometimes you ain't going to feel nothing? Sometimes that's when you're probably most anointed, when you don't feel nothing. Because this, this faith walk is not about feeling. This action, this principles of God is not about feeling. If I got to wait till I feel it to do it, it probably won't get done. How many of y'all just felt like forgiving somebody who constantly acting crazy? They don't feel like it. Lord, I got to be honest with God. God, I don't want to forgive this person or this group of people. But because your words say so. That's the only reason I'm even thinking, even turning that way. Because if it was left up to me, I'd put them out there in misery. But I know that's my flesh. So in order to walk in the Spirit, and that's our next point, walking in the Spirit is a choice. It ain't something spooky. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that's you. Run from that spookiness. Walking in the Spirit is obeying the Spirit's prompting to do the Word. That's walking in the Spirit. Obeying the Spirit's prompting to walk or obey the Word. It ain't nothing spooky about it. It is a natural fact. As you obey His promptings, you will see the results of God. Nobody said this was going to be easy. That's the sufferings of Christ. You know what people say, well, you know, I'm going to suffer with Christ. You suffering with Christ. And you ever had to do something your flesh was kicking a fit about? Most time it's forgiveness. Most time it's keeping that flesh from going where it want to go, doing what it want to do. That's suffering with Christ. Not sickness, not poverty. Modifying the deeds of your flesh is the suffering with Christ. Do you know Christ had to allow his body to be bruised? Allow his beard to be plucked. 
Allow them to catch him and carry him and put him on the cross. At any time, he could have called legions of angels and, and stopped the whole process. But he did it for us. Now we go through sufferings for him. Forgiving the unforgivable. That's suffering for Christ. Committing that thing to God. Lord, I don't want to. But I must because your words say so. Just using forgiveness now. Lord, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to release them. I'm going to let them go. They've done some weird stuff, some really evil, ugly stuff, and they continue to walk in that ugly actions. But God, because you say forgive, I forgive them. Now, you may have to say that every morning. You may have to get up every morning. Father, today, I forgive Jim. I hope I don't have a Jim in here. I just pull a name out. If I just pull the name out. Father, I forgive him. I forgive Sally. It ain't about feelings, it's about faith. I release my faith now to let them go this day. Now, Lord, I may have to do it tomorrow. I may have to do it again today. I may have to do it tonight. But I want to walk in forgiveness with them so you can deal with that. So I can be free to be blessed. And I know it's not about feelings. It's about your word. So now, as I begin to walk in the Spirit, so this is the first couple of things I want to get across. I'm not going to be able to get across too much more. I first got to be born again. Number two, I've got to receive the Holy Spirit, his gifts, his fruit, his conviction, his operations in my life. And I can't go around grieving him continually, ignoring him constantly. And I've got to spend time in the Word so I can know his voice. So I can know what he's going to always speak to me in agreement with the word. So now I must train myself as I grow in knowledge and in grace to hear his voice. To understand his promptings. He is never going to, he's never going to, uh, 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 the devil is never going to say something to you that God would say. The devil ain't going to never tell you to fast. If you ever hear something about fasting, it, it probably ain't the devil at all. He don't tell you nothing about praying. He'll give you all kinds of excuses not to pray. All kinds of excuses not to fast. All kinds of excuses not to love. All kinds of excuses not to forgive. But see, the Holy Spirit is Lord now in the earth in our life. Jesus is Lord, but he's seated in heaven in the heavenly place. He's seated in heaven, in the heavenly place, high above principalities and powers and wicked spirits, and we're seated with him. And how do we begin to walk in the spirit? This is just part one of this, walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. Walking in the counsel of God. You've got to stand in this council in order to be able to hear his voice. The prophet said, I must stand up on my watch and hear what he has to speak to me. See, I I've got to spend time in the word. That's why the devil don't want people coming to church. He don't want a person coming to learn, to get instructions in righteousness. He wants you to wing it. Do you hear me out there, Facebook, YouTube? The devil wants you to try to wing your relationship with God. When there are principles in God's word that... Tell us how to handle life situations. And the Holy Spirit can't speak to you about what you don't know. He can try, but the Bible says it's going to be foolish to you. So in order to be able to walk in the Spirit, you've got to spend time with the Spirit, time with the Word, time in training and, and in revelation and instructions in righteousness. The Bible said that the Word of God is good for rebuke and reproof. And instructions in righteousness that the man or woman of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. That's why you have to spend time in the Word. That's why you're here today. You're not here for some religious activity. You're here to be imparted to, to be instructed, to be strengthened, to know how to walk with God. This is not about shouting and who's dressed and who's riding and what and who's dressed how. This is about learning how to walk with God continually because we've got to endure to the end. Some people are not eating spiritual food at all and they wonder why they're spiritually malnutritioned. 
You are what you eat. You eating foolishness, you eating pabble, you gonna be foolish and weak. But if you're eating meat and you're eating principles of God, and when I say eating, you are digesting the things of God. You are putting, you're not just hearing it, you're becoming a doer of that word. You will find God will move in your life. So I know I'm born again. Number two, I gotta tighten up my relationship with the Holy Spirit. I got to get to know him. I got to be as Holy Spirit, is that you speaking? Is that, is that little nudge, is that you? It, it, are you warning me about this person or that group? I, I'm, 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 I'm always perusing 360 in the spirit. What are you saying, Holy Spirit? And nothing weird about it. It's just discerning your environment all the time. See, somebody could be for you today and, and somebody get in their ear and tomorrow they're against you. But they still look the same. But their heart been corrupted. Ah, yeah. Mishkibosha. Their heart's been corrupted. Now, now, now you got a devil in your camp and you don't know it. Yes, I saw a, I saw a post this morning. Many people will try to get other people to hate you, but they can't stop God from blessing you. Ah, yeah, I don't know if you heard me. Many people will try to get people to hate you, but they can't stop God from blessing you. Glory to God. The only person that can stop God from blessing you, come on up in here, somebody, right in your shoe. That's your biggest problem is in your shoe. How you going to react to the haters? Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. See, this is what walking in the spirit is all about. The Holy Spirit will help you. But you can't walk around life ignoring him, not knowing anything about him. And he's only good for church services when he gives me a word. No, 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 no. He is in you to give you victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Glory to God. Number one, born of the Spirit. Number two, receive the Spirit. Number three, live and walk by the Spirit. Galatians 5.25. I'm almost finished. Galatians 5.25. Yeah, I'm going to be finished in about five minutes. Galatians 5.25. It's just an introduction. Up above that, Starting at verse 18, let's start at verse 17. You can go back and read that later. It says uh, that we are called to walk in the Spirit. And then the Bible gives us understanding of, when I say walk, this word means conduct ourselves. Conduct ourselves by the Spirit. And I told you it's not something spooky. Something where you know you can't fit in society because you're walking by the Spirit. Y'all ever seen people like that? I'm, ooh. They're just, they're just weird out. No, 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 no. Jesus didn't walk like that. Jesus wasn't weird. You are, you are naturally supernatural. As you mature, you will become more supernatural, but you'll also become more uh, socially acceptable by your actions. Do you know you can be fully anointed? I mean the glory of God all over you, and you don't have to do no, ooh, how you living? You don't have to do not one jet, one shake. You got that flesh trained to carry that glory. Oh, my God. That's why some of us can't really walk with that coat that God want to put us. See, Adam and Eve had a coat of glory on. They was covered in glory. God want to put that same thing on us. He wanted to manifest on us, but some of us will be going out there shaking. And this, you know, people don't have nothing to do with you. Too strange. But you're walking in that power. Like Peter, just your shadow passing by people are healed. You just say a word and it'll come to pass. You're naturally supernatural. Glory to God. That's mature. I'm talking about a mature believer. I'm talking about sons of God. The Bible says the earth is waiting and travailing for the manifestation of the sons of God. Mature believers. Walking in power and dominion and might and wisdom. Not, not, not spooky. 
Here he says here, if you go ahead and read the whole Galatians 5, he says in verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill, fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, if I want to know if I'm walking in the Spirit, all I got to do is go down here and start le reading in verse 19 about these manifestations of the flesh. Let me tell you this. Every time you kill a manifestation of the flesh, you release a manifestation of glory. Write that down. Every time you kill a manifestation of the flesh, you give resurrection power to a manifestation of glory. In the last days, the Bible says Jesus is coming back for what kind of church? A glorious church. A church full of people, a remnant full of people who have crucified the flesh and are walking and standing in glory like never before. But you cannot allow these things to stay in your life. You know, there are people who get saved that were adulterers. But the Holy Ghost worked on them and shut down that adultery. Do you know there are men and women that were unfaithful to their mate when they got saved, when God got a hold to them, and they became faithful? Oh, yeah, yeah. When people are not saved, they do something, anything. Just because you didn't do it, praise God. But sin is sin. But the, the list starts with the adulterer. Then it goes on down talk about fornication. We don't even go there, do we? Before we got saved, we were running around, sleeping around, doing all kinds of stuff, kicking it. But now when God started getting a hold to you, see, some of these young, some of these young these, hear this, okay, you're going to marry me or you're going to move. Mm-hmm, okay, I ain't going to mess with that. Because I got to kill some stuff. Are y'all hearing me? I, I got to kill some stuff so I can move in glory. I, I got to kill some stuff so I can ascend into his presence. I got to kill some stuff so I can have more of God. Yeah, See, walking in the spirit. This is how you know you're walking in the spirit. You're killing some stuff. You're crucifying some stuff. You can come back and talk to God about, you know, God, I used to be this. God, I used to be that. But thank God I ain't that no more. Woo, glory to God. God, I used to do this. I used to be hateful. I used to be a variance. I used to be full of strife and sedition. And God spoke something to me about this word contentious. Oh, that's a spirit that's going to keep a lot of people away from the pearly gates. The contentious, ready to argue in a minute. They ain't thinking about being a peacemaker. Set it off if you want. I'm right with you, baby. Just set it off. Try me. Ain't nowhere in their mind about being a peacemaker. They set to pull the trigger. You cock it, I'll pull it. It's going to be a lot of people going to be disappointed because that flesh. I don't know if y'all ready for this one. I don't know if y'all ready for all this. But we should be, we should be past this. But God said, we, we people still walking in this. 98% Pastor Virginia. 98% of the believers that have been surveyed are walking in the flesh constantly. That's a problem. Yeah, the devil going to bring it, but you don't have to receive it. I mean, you know, if they bring a post, or bring a, the UPS drop, come to your house and bring a mail for Mr. Tom Jones, and your name is uh, James Jackson. You'd be a fool to receive that. You don't know what that is. Say, no, no, he don't live here. Take it with you. Well, I'm just going to leave it here until we find No, I'm not going to be responsible for that. Take it with you. When the devil show up, you take that with you. I'm not going to be hateful. Take that with you. I'm not going to kick this thing off. Take that. I know you're trying to get me to kick it off. I'm not going to kick it off. I'm not, you got the wrong one today. I ain't kicking it off. I'm going I'm to take that. I, I'm, I know they was a little shady. Lord, have mercy. There it is. I know they was a little shady with that, what they just said. I, I recognize the shade, but I ain't going to bite. Is anybody up in here with me? Every day, Pastor Virginia said, every day you got a chance, you got an opportunity to backslide, fall off, respond by the flesh every day. You have to make a conscious decision. I'm not going to bite. I'm not going to take that bait. Mm-mm. Yeah, honey, yeah, I heard you. Praise the Lord. It's time for me to move on now. This conversation about to go in the wrong direction. You know if you don't do that, you know what's going to happen, huh? 
They ain't probably got about two or three bites on you. Some of y'all, they ain't got one good. They ha- oh, what? It's a half a bite. They just fix their teeth to bite you. <laughs> half a bite. I'm like, woo. Y'all get a chance. Go home. Read Galatians all the way through that five. Then he goes down and he talks about the fruits of the spirit. Then he says at 25, if you live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. See, you can't walk in the spirit unless you live in the spirit. You can't live in the flesh and then expect to be able to switch over to the spirit just like that. You got to practice walking in the spirit. Now, here's the last one. Get ready to close. You know you're born again. You receive the things of the Spirit. You let the Spirit lead your life. And now out of that, Jesus is looking for worshipers. See, a lot of people are worshiping, but they're not not the type of worshiper Jesus is looking for. He's looking for worshipers that will worship him. True worshipers. Come on, Pastor Virginia. True worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. He's looking for people who are walking in the Spirit and can worship him according to his word. Song, song according to the word. A life lived according to the word. A worshiper and the worshiper he can receive. Mm-mm. God is a spirit. John four twenty four. And those that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. So just this beginning, walking in the spirit. We can't forget what our responsibility is to walk with God. Before we came to God, we walked with our old nature. But now that we've been born again, the Bible says there's some places where it says we owe nothing to the flesh. Boy, that's a heavy word there. You owe nothing to your old nature. You owe nothing to have to obey your old unctions and urges. Because those things produce death. But the law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. So here is the scope of the message today. It's time to get back to walking in the spirit. It's time to get back to a relationship with God. It's a time to begin to crucify the flesh and allow God to lift you up out of what have tried to hold you, condemn you, and misuse you. But you have to make a decision if you want to do that. See, that decision has to come out of your mouth. Now, you may be here today. You heard something today. That really ministered to you. And I know I need to do better with my walk with God. I need to do better with crucifying my flesh. You know, the Bible said that we must come to repentance. See, if if a message don't bring you to repentance somewhere in it, probably wasn't God. Now, if the nurse comes out, At the doctor's office. Y'all all all sitting in the doctor's office. And the nurse comes out and say, who all need to see the doctor? Everybody's hands going to go up. Are you here to see the doctor? Are you here to see the doctor? Yes. Are you here to see the doctor? Are you willing to see the doctor? Yes. All right, the doctor will be with you in just a minute. We're at that point now. I'm the nurse. How many of you need to see the doctor about what you heard today? Dr. Jesus, stand to your feet. I need to see Dr. Jesus about what I heard today. Now, nobody know what part you heard. Nobody know what he said to you. See, it's like when you go to the doctor. Nobody go come in and say, you know, it, it's, have y'all ever had about it and doctor ask you what you here for? Now, see, that almost will make you go off. That ain't your business. You ain't the doctor. I'm not, but I ain't going to say that to you. I just need to see the doctor. I'm here for my regular checkup. <laughs> but you got something wrong but see every time we come to church we, we're here for a checkup we're not here to have fun and, and shine the lights in one another's face we're here for a checkup 
We're here to see the doctor. We're here to, here's the first thing I got to do. I got a doctor got to bring me. He got to find my problem. And most time my problem originate with sin with this doctor. Either sins of commission, sins of omission. I, I didn't follow the word like I should or I know I should have did this, but I didn't. So the first thing we do is repent. Very easy. First John 1 and 9. Father, repeat after me. Father God, I stand in your presence now, repenting from letting the flesh take advantage of me. I know that the Holy Spirit in me can be stronger than any part of my old nature. And I repent of these things that have opened the door to defeat and weakness in my life. Thank you that the blood of Jesus is speaking for me. Thank you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for casting that thing as far as the east is from the west. I receive forgiveness now. And Lord, I thank you for giving me power to forgive those that you have shown me that may be against me. I release them today into your hands and help me to stay in the spirit concerning them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want you to just lift your hands in front of them in the presence of the Lord. Father, with our hands lifted now, we invite the Holy Spirit and all that he is into our life afresh. Help me to pray more in tongues, building myself up on my most holy faith. Help me, Lord, to spend time in the word that I may meditate and grow in the things of you. Help me that I may be able to hear your voice and sense your impressions within me. Father, I thank you for the continual, weaking, dying crucifixion of my old nature and the strengthening of my new nature in Christ. I receive now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I just want you to pray in the Holy Ghost slightly under your breath. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Yakaliasi mori dia samando no lo boca ria da masia ya yen dio sono ribande si che ne mosha pori dia si musanaya ele on dia si che non mo coia mandi si che ne mo rus na masia naya for some say you will never change says the spirit of god but i say unto you you have already been changed you are stepping into that change you're stepping into that new place you're stepping into that place of manifested glory that you may be called and manifest as a son of God that that had victory over you at one time you are standing on it did not I say in my word that you shall tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy this day I give you strength that you never had a determination that you never had insight that you never had victory that you never possessed you will notice in the days to come that the buttons that were used to be able to be pressed on you for that reaction of the flesh have been wiped off by the glory and now you shall live and walk in my presence and as you continue to learn my ways you will see the glory of my kingdom and of my word extend upon your life in a new and fresh way. This is your day of breakthrough, break out into a new realm, a new place, a new understanding, and a fresh relationship with the Holy Spirit. Sheba, Rusine, Murukushibadi.
Zola balaki se nem rusava nia se kemono no mosia. Purity of heart, clarity of mind, be upon you now. <laughs> ah, ah, hey, hey, shoda, sulu, my sakuna mandia. Yeboliam sundo kalia se. Yeah. My daughter. Alamando shikaba. I have not forgotten you. Even this day I'm refreshing and renewing. Cleansing and purging. Alabosin in asaya. I'm visiting everything that concerns you. Your home, your workplace. As you let go, <laughs> I've been waiting on you. I suffered watching you endure what you endured. But now it's mine. <laughs> now it's mine. The glory of God, the glory of God, the glory of God, the glory of God is here right now for you. Lord, I receive, 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 Lord, I receive right now. There's a fog in the house. The glory of God is here right now. I receive, Lord. I receive. I receive the healing of my heart. Oh, your heart, your heart, your heart, out of the abundance of the heart flows the issues of life. Even now, I'm cleansing, purging. I'm getting that, I'm getting that hiccup, that, 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 that stumbling block, that, that thing that was constraining you and I'm pulling it out even now. Let there be peace where there was pain. My God. Sutai. Sikamundiyama. Hallelujah. 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 That's the glory right there. That that you sense in your spirit is how you should feel in your spirit all the time. If it's, if it's vexed, it means something's not right. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. May the peace of God keep you all week. And when that peace is disturbed, you can spot it. You can, ah, uh, yep, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Lord, let it rest upon us. Let it rest upon us. Let us become accustomed to it so that we can recognize when it's not there or when it's lifting. Holy Spirit, we love you. We reverence you. We thank you. We ask you as we go forth this week to be with us. As you've always said, you'll never leave us, nor forsake us, but help us to become more sensitive to you. We thank you tonight, today. Father, we thank you for keeping your face shining upon us, keeping your grace upon us, keeping your love upon us as we leave this place, but never your presence. Help us to remember your peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can consider yourself released. You can stay in his presence if you like. If you want to speak to someone, do it in respect of the Holy Spirit because he is here. You may want to just agree with somebody. I agree. 
with you this week for the victory that is yours. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. We love you.